Hello. I recently picked up a few pieces of hi-fi equipment from a local second-hand shop. They have this junk pile for equipment that doesn't work. And this is where I got this CD player. And I have a few other pieces as well. So basically equipment they deemed not worth repairing or I think they're not even trying to repair it. So they have a lot of hi-fi equipment from the 80s, 90s, all the way back to the 70s. Um, and the junk pile, well, sometimes you can find some okay stuff there. There's never any really high-end stuff, but occasionally there will be okay pieces of equipment like this CD player here. So anyways, so it's not working. They do test it and, well, it had a couple of stickers here uh, saying it's not working. It's very cheap. Uh, basically, the junk pile is just like they'd rather have someone buy it than having to send it to recycling. So let's see if we can get this thing up and running again. The model number is Sony CDP611. Uh, it's also known as the CDP D7. So let's try to plug it in and see what happens. Cable here is a bit stiff, but not not too bad. It's not going to crack. I think it's just a little bit stiff. Um, of course, I'm hoping that it's going to be something really simple. Often, what happens is that the tray here, there's inside there's a small motor and there's a belt drive to open the tray. So when you click the open close button here, uh, maybe that belt is faulty. I'm hoping it's something really simple like that. Anyway, let's get some power on it. Okay, I plugged it into my dim bolt current limiter. Now, oh, see, hit the power button, what happens? Oh, we do get something on the display here. So far, it's looking good. You can see it says no disk. So, let's see if it's the belt that's the problem. No, unfortunately, the tray came out just fine, and the belt is probably okay. Uh, let's try get a CD in and see what happens. Maybe it's working. Okay, so it still says no disk. Uh, that's not so good. I hope it's not the laser module because it could be quite hard to find a new laser module for it. But anyway, I think we need to take it apart and see what's going on. So to open it up, we just need to remove two screws on each side and one in the back. Then we can just lift the cover up. So looking inside the CD player here, uh, it's looking very clean. I don't think anyone has ever been inside here before, and it looks like reasonable quality. This is a mid-range CD player. Uh, it's definitely not a high-end player, so this is kind of what to expect. Uh, but then again, it's also not the very cheapest player in the lineup. So the primary suspect is the laser over here, and the whole uh, mechanism here, and maybe the board down here. Sometimes it's possible to adjust the laser to get some more performance out of it, so let's see what we can do here. So it doesn't look like the laser is stuck. Uh, it looks like it's working okay. Let me just try power it on here. Yeah, it's definitely moving. Just open the tray here. Power it off again. Yeah, it doesn't look like we have any broken gears or anything like that. But I'll say the lens down here looks a little bit cloudy. Uh, you might not be able to see that on the camera. So I think I'll just try to clean it a little bit. So I'm just using a tiny bit of alcohol on a Q-tip here. See if we can get this 
layer of dirt. This can sometimes be the problem. I have to be a little bit careful. It's looking a bit more clear now. Right, let's try and see it again, see if it made any changes. Yeah, it's actually recognizing the CD now, so <laughs> that might have been the only problem. Well, if that was it, then that's almost too easy. Um, but I don't think we're quite done yet here. So looking at the display again, we can see it's actually playing the CD. Let's skip forward here. Yeah, it's actually playing. Uh, I think I'll just remove this sticker here. Now it's getting annoying. Again, I'm just using a little bit of alcohol here. I hope I move the sticker. Hopefully. Oops. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. So the display is quite nice and bright. And it does look like everything is working. Hmm. Well, that was a very easy repair, if that's all. Uh, but we still need to test it, make sure the outputs are working correctly. There's actually music coming out of it. So I'll hook it up and we can run some tests on it. I've hooked up my analog discovery to the output of the CD player. And I have this CD here with various test tones. Uh, quite helpful for diagnosing a CD player. So for the first test I'm using my audio analyzer suite. I'm using the Spectrum Analyzer and running a test tone 1 kilohertz minus 30 dB uh, left channel only. And we look here the tone we get over here. So we look over here we can see it's very accurate minus 30 dB and the right channel is 92 dB down. Well, it might be further down, but we're down in the noise floor of the analog discovery. So that looks good. So let's run the next tone. That's just going to be the right channel and no left channel. And there we go. This time we have the right channel, 30 dB down. Perfect. And the left channel is down in the noise floor. So that looks good. And I don't see any harmonics coming from this tone, so it's all looking good. Keep in mind, we're not trying to test the performance of the CD player here. This is purely to verify that there are no major issues. So for the next test, I'll run a sweep all the way up to 20 kilohertz, and let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's looking flat. Yeah, that looks great. So with these tests here, I'm fairly confident that uh, no performance issues. So let's try some music and see what it sounds like. I have this CD with music from the YouTube library, just so we don't get any copyright strikes or block videos. So let's try to put that in. So I think while playing that, it would be interesting. I'll try to see if I give a sample of this DSP thing here that is built in this CD player. I guess this might have been attractive in the 90s, but to be honest, personally, I usually prefer just going direct. I don't need any DSP. But I guess in some cases it can enhance the music experience.
So I think it sounds good. Uh, no problems there. Not so sure about the DSP, but I guess in some cases uh, it can make sense to use it. So I think that's we almost done here. Uh, of course, the top cover here is quite scuffed up. Um, might go as far to give it a new paint job, but I think maybe just washing it. You see there's some outlines of old feet that have been sitting on top here. So I think just a good wash and get the last stick of pieces off here. And often when we have like scrapings like here, it's, you can often just use like a permanent marker and you can at least make it a lot better. Just kind of mark it and run it over with a finger. Usually improves it quite a lot. So I think that's it for this video. Uh, the CD player successfully brought back to life and fully tested and fully working. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and then I'll see you next time. Bye bye.